Hey guys, I'm Jose and welcome to this new tutorial in Unity. Um, so in this tutorial we're going to see how to, um, if you see the, the tutorial we did in the last video, uh, it was how to create these kind of cubes, placing cubes uh, just in the right location beside another cube, right? So we would just like hit on one and then we would detect the transform node of that uh, hit element and create a box that would be in the right location just to have a continuous kind of um, system of creation similar to Minecraft, right? So uh, that was cool. Um, we had some fun with that. Also we saw how to improve the kind of the ray caster so it kind of really behaves uh, in relation to the mouse. And in this tutorial we're gonna just um, try to do this, uh, we're gonna do it over two tutorials, so um, we're gonna just try to kind of replace this geometry with some other kind of geometry, uh, in this case a tetrahedron and um, start seeing what would be the similar logic of, of what we're doing with the cube in terms of the tetrahedron, in terms of like the normal of the tetrahedron and how we could actually start placing um, different geometries basically. Every geometry would kind of have a similar uh, rule but um, because the tetrahedron has a kind of a custom um, angle uh, for each face, uh, we're gonna have to do a bit of math and vector math for that. So let's prepare the geometry first. Uh, I'm going to leave uh, Unity and just because I'm going to be working with something very precise, I'm going to do it here in Rhino. Um, you can pick any kind of software that you want really to do this. Um, I'm just going to, because I have some tools here that are very precise about doing things in specific lengths. So I'm going to do a line of one um, unit and I'm gonna rotate this line just 60 degrees Oops. rotate with a copy 60 and then I repeat that with a copy I have a triangle right um, if you want to calculate the center of that triangle you could do it many ways but you can also do these lines right with perpendicular snapping on in Rhino and you can have this the center of the triangle right so uh, I could place this center in 0 0 0 just by typing it um, move it from the center and then this place to 0 0 0 so I have this triangle um, now what I want to do is just do a line from here one unit down there so this is the line we're talking about and if we see, I'm going to zoom into that. You see that my line, uh, this line should be in a way rotated uh, somewhere, um, somewhere up, and it needs to be projected on that point, right? So at the same time, we could do this line going up like that, right? And the important thing is that now we know um, that this line needs to intersect with this other one um, in a specific place, right? So this is the line we're talking about. So let's try to rotate. Uh, so it's from here till there. And here you see this is where we should kind of snap but it's not allowing us to do so, so what we could do is just is like do a circle and we can do the circle like at the length of this line, right? So that's fine and now we can rotate this line to the intersection of that circle. And you see that we've got uh, the logic of a tetrahedron where this segment and this segment are the same length of one unit, this one as well all of them being one unit and now we can actually easily uh, pick this one and mirror it in this axis like that so you see that we created another one and if we mirror it in this axis we have the line work that would describe this tetrahedron right so this stuff we don't care about um, and then we can just go here and in, not here, but 
here. Yes. So pyramid, and I'm going to say number of sides three. Uh, so I'm going to place it in the middle, and you see that three sides. I can go there and then go up, and then I have basically my tetrahedron. Um, so that's good, but the problem is that uh, I'm going to move this guy just for us to see still. Um, because we have the zero zero here, um, we want to place the zero zero uh, in the center or the centroid of this tetrahedron, right? So I'm going to call um, grasshopper. And I actually was already working in something like this. But let's create a new document. Um, and what I'm going to do is just call a BREP, which represents a polysurface here in Grasshopper. I mean, you can see some of the Grasshopper tutorials uh, if you're interested in Grasshopper. But um, so I'm going to hide this element. And what I'm looking is for the volume. Because in the case of a tetrahedron, the volume will give me the point. Uh, so point here, the center, you see that we have that point. And that point, um, it is quite important because it's the, it's the center of the tetrahedron, right? The other thing we could do is say BREP. Uh, BREP components. Uh, there we go, BREP components, and um, the geometry that we have has several faces, and if we calculate the area of each one of the faces, which is the first node, we get all the faces of it, right? So we have the centroid of the faces, and also I'm going to do, repeat this kind of point here, so I have also those points. So I can actually do a line between this point and this point, right? So you see that I'm doing, I can hide some of this stuff so we can see it better. Um, I have the center of mass and I have the perpendicular direction to each one of these faces. This is not really necessary, I'm just kind of trying to calculate what is it going to be the length of this line, right? So I'm going to do a text tag uh, tag um, so yeah text tag and the location of the text tag it's going to be this point there we go the color we don't care text to display it's going to be the length of the line so length And there we go. So you see that uh, now basically I want to um, get this information as some geometry, right? So I could just get these points. Um, basically, I want this point to be baked, this tag, and this line, right? So I'm going to bake them, close grasshopper, and there we go. So this is my tetrahedron, right? We can turn on wireframe. We have the point in the middle. And this is the distance. We could have baked the lines as well, actually. Let's do that. So now the line, bake. We have those lines. And I'm going to place the tetrahedron from the center in 0, 0, 0. Right? So I'm trying to be very kind of clear that you know, the center of mass is going to be in the pivot point of the object. And I know exactly now what is the length of from the center to the face, right? Because that's going to be exactly the same distance from the face to the center of the next object, right? So just knowing uh, what we're doing with our geometry and being precise is going to take us a really long way. Um, so we can see our tetrahedron here, and this tetrahedron right now it's a NURB, so we could just go to mesh, mesh from NURBs, and create a NURB, I mean, sorry, a mesh, and delete the NURB object, so you see that now we have a clean triangular face uh, mesh. And um, what we're going to do here is just export this guy, export, select it, uh, and we're going to call it uh, tetra. 
and you see that I've already done this a few times just to check. So tetra, um, uh, let's say that, right? So there we go. Um, some of the options of the OBJ, I'm going to do it again just to check in some of those options. Yes. I'm using Y app just because we're going to pass through Maya still, just to apply some textures and see. So it's a polygon mesh, yeah, polygon lines, and Y app. Okay. That's perfect. So we replace the geometry, right? Um, so let's go back to Maya. And we have a new scene in Maya here uh, that I have it open already. Uh, and I'm going to just go to import tetra object. There we go. So we have a tetrahedron. We can frame that. And you see that one of the things that we can realize right away is that the zero coordinate, uh, it's still in the center of the tetrahedron. And um, we have Yeah, so this is important. This is something that we should be aware of. The blue axis, the set axis here, it's pointing backwards, or like what would we? I mean, that would be the forward vector in Unity, right? So we, it's important we have one axis at least aligned with that forward vector, or at least against it, so backwards, right? So that's fine. Let's press five. This is a tetrahedron that it's kind of in just this kind of Lambert shader. Um, so what we could do now is just let's say let's look at windows um, we're gonna go to UV texture editor and you see that this is kind of how it looks unfolded right I mean just looking at each one of the faces we have these four quadrants um, which you with each one of the faces so basically what I've done is just um, prepare a texture like this one um, that has four colors, right? And you can just do that. Uh, I mean, this is a 400 by 400 texture. Just prepare anything and paint these colors in and save it. Um, let's save that because I'm not sure if I've saved it. Uh, so we're going to call this um, colors. And I'm going to save it just a JPEG, really. Awesome. So I had it there. So just going to save it again, right? So we have this texture ready to be applied to our object now. So let's go back to Maya. And having being aware of this UV, I mean, we, we're not going to be just really mapping UVs because this is kind of such a simple geometry. So uh, if we only apply here in the color of the, so selecting the object, going to the um, material, which is here, Lambert 1, and the color, we could say, well, use a file. And we're going to get to this area and we're going to load our color. And that should be applied. The only thing is that we're not being able to see it. Uh, that's because we are kind of, we pressed five. Uh, four is wireframe, five is shaded, six will show us the textures, right? So you see that now our tetrahedron is having these colors like that. So that's pretty good. That will help us kind of with orientations as much as I mean we could add like some numbers to know exactly where the vertices are and, and all sorts of things um, right now the colors are enough you have green yellow light blue like cyan and red right so let's save this guy now and um, we're gonna export it again export selected and we're gonna call it tetra color I had one ready there as well and I'm gonna use the FBX export right if you don't have a FEX export um, available, just you need to go to setting preferences and I'm going to show you really quick. Uh, setting preferences, plugin manager, and make sure that you have the FBX export um, somewhere there in DevWay. It's FBX for Maya, right? Load it. And then you can just export selection, right? So you export it as whatever you want. And Yes, there we go. So we're ready. We're, re we're ready to just bring this into Unity, right? So let's go into Unity and let's go here to right click Import New Asset and we're going to go to Desktop Tetra Color. Right? So there we go. And you see that when we bring it in, 
we don't have the color applied. That's fine. Um, let's create when you see that the FBX by default comes by 0 0.01 in scale. We're going to say scale factor 1. So that's going to be the scale that we want to work in. Sorry, we had to press apply here. When you change that one, you have to press apply. So now we should have that tetrahedron in the right size. We're also going to click here in generate colliders. Click, apply. And so we have the tetrahedron, right? Um, let's also import the texture color, right? And basically we need to apply this uh, color to this tetrahedron, right? So let's bring this into the screen. We should check already. You see that our axis it's working pretty well. It's in. You see that the, the axis is not located in the centroid. That's because I'm here in center, as opposed to pivot. If I click there in pivot, I'll see that that's the pivot of the object, and that should be as we set it, right? So that shouldn't be affected. And this object, uh, when we when we show the tetrahedron right here. Um, we could create a new material as well, so right click here, create material, and we're going to call this material uh, colors, colors 01, right? So this color will receive this texture, right? And then you have lots of different options for this, what kind of shader this is, but diffuse for now it's good. Um, so we could apply um, we have this tetrahedron. Let's make this guy a prefab as well. So create new prefab. We're gonna uh, tetra, right? So the tetra color. We're gonna drag it here. So now this guy it's a prefab. And our prefab we could apply the material that we wanted. There we go. Right. So we have our tetrahedron. in the screen. Um, with the color mapped. And one more thing that we want to do, not applied to this tetrahedron specifically, but in general to the prefab, is so we have the mesh collider, we have the color, and here in tag, I have already created a tag called tetra, but if you don't have that, let's add a new tag element that is called Tetra, right? So you just click here as we've done in the last tutorial for Supercube. Create one for just one that it's called Tetra, right? So that's going to become handy in the next script, right? So if you have that, let's go back to our Tetra and make sure that we're using the tag Tetra, right? So you see um, this object, if you opt, uh, import things as OBJs, this object will come with an arrow with a geometry parented to that node, right? That's where we're using as well the FBX in this case because you would have to unlink that, that network uh, in order to work with it uh, easier, right? But for now this is good, right? So we have this prefab with the color maps, um, with the colors mapped, and also with the tag and ready to start working with our script. Right. So in the next one, we're going to start seeing this, this script of aggregation. Right. Season.